I would rather choose to drink from a clean cup. Now, if you want God to use you and make your life meaningful, then it is best to be free from filth. It is best to be free from sin which defiles us. And so if you want God to use your life, if you want God to pick you up like a clean cup from the cupboard, it is best to be clean because sin defiles a person. Made some of that up. Okay, so once upon a time, there was a man. And uh, he had everything you could have imagined there. And so he had every article of clothing. He had all the cool clothes. And, and, uh, and he had uh, all kinds of, of vehicles. Actually, this man uh, didn't have vehicles. This man had horses And uh, before the vehicle era. And uh, he had multiple horses. And he had multiple houses. And uh, his wealth was beyond the wealth of anyone here in Rome County, East Tennessee area. His social status and his following was phenomenal. And uh, he had more flocks than what could be numbered. Uh, and, by the way, he was a king. A what? A king. Yes, he was a king. And uh, he, had, he had or could get almost, Lucas, anything that he really wanted. One upon, once upon a time, he saw a woman. He saw a woman, and man, this woman was beautiful. And he got it in a double take and said, wow, she is a beautiful woman. And uh, uh, so she, he saw this woman, she was beautiful, and, and he lusted after her in his heart. Well, uh, this, this very wealthy man that had anything, this very wealthy king had, could have had almost anything he wanted. He sent his servants to go bring her to his house, and uh, he had committed a sin with her. This sin was called... What is it called? Y'all know what it's called? Adultery. Adultery, yes. Yeah, this sin is called <laughs> adultery there. Okay? And so when a man has a relationship with a married woman, or when a woman has a relationship with a married man, uh, the Bible calls that adultery. Okay? So Exodus chapter 20 says, Thou shalt what? Adultery. Thou shalt not commit okay. adultery. That's what God says. Now this is a very serious sin. Okay? This sin is not only against God, but this is one of the only sins that's also against your own body. And so uh, the Bible teaches us those things. And so uh, this sin is very, very serious. Proverbs 6 says, Whoso committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. Uh, he destroyeth his own soul. Now you've got to pay attention here because... Uh, the Big Bang Theory, movie, show, TV series, whatever, they, they kind of uh, uh, demonstrate adultery as a fun, funny thing. Uh, and you've got to pay attention here because uh, all these other little TV shows on, on the, on the te television, they portray ha uh, adultery as kind of a not-so-serious thing. And so we've got to realize that it is a serious thing. The Bible says that whosoever commits adultery destroyeth, his own soul. Now, uh, let me just tell you what Jesus said about adultery in Matthew chapter 5. He said, Ye hear that it was said of them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Oh, but I say unto you that whosoever looketh after a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. And so lusting after a woman uh, is really the same as committing adultery. Uh, so adultery is a very serious sin. Jesus said that lusting after a woman or, or a woman lusting after a man, that's, that's a very serious thing. And Now again, like I said, uh, the things we watch on television, they make it seem like it's normal, like it's okay, like it's, it's just what humans do. They look at someone and they lust after them. But it's not okay. God says and the Bible tells us that it's very serious. Matter of fact, Proverbs says that fools make a mock at sin. They laugh at it. They think it's silly. They think it's uh, goofy. They think it's, uh, it's not really that big of a deal. Uh, but the Bible says that that person is a fool. Now, the king in my previous story, as you probably guessed, was a king whose name was David. And after he had committed this sin with this woman, whose name was Bathsheba, he tried to commit, uh, he, he committed another sin. Now, first he committed, what was the sin called? 
adultery. And then he tried to cover that up with another sin uh, called deceitfulness. And uh, now, um, adultery is not the only serious sin, uh, but this sin of deceitfulness is also very serious. The Bible says this, actually. These six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven, are an abomination. He hates a proud look. He hates a lying tongue. He hates hands that shed innocent blood. He hates a heart that what? That deviseth wicked imaginations. He hates feet that are swift and running to mischief. God hates a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, the Bible tells us that deceitfulness is very serious. And so um, David committed a sin which Proverbs says God hated. Now it doesn't stop there. First it was adultery, then he used deceitfulness to try to cover up his sin, and, and then as you hopefully recall the story to your mind, he committed another sin. It was the sin of murder. He took Bathsheba's uh, husband and, and uh, had him murdered. He, he sent him to the battlefield and, and sent a letter and said, all right, now, Joab, send him to the place that he's going to die. And uh, Joab, I imagine, scratched his head and thought, well, okay. And he did that. <coughs> and uh, Uriah, Bathsheba's husband, died. Therefore, David committed murder. He was murdered at the command of of David. Now, the consequences of sin uh, cost David dearly, all right? First of all, his baby died. Uh, a few, uh, a short time after these sins, David's baby was killed. It was died. It died. Uh, his family uh, had terrible problems. There was incest amongst his sons and his daughters. His son went in unto his daughter and incestual relationship, sick relationship, and that was David's children. Okay, his family hated each other. How many of y'all had problems with your family at maybe Christmas? Don't raise your hands. <laughs> uh, but hey, David's family, they hated each other, right? <laughs> David's family had divisions one against the other. Solomon hated Absalom. Well, Absalom hated Solomon, and uh, Absalom tried to kill his own father, and and uh, David not only had family problems, say, what more, Mikey? What more? Yeah, that's okay. Here's what else. He also lost his kingdom. He lost his kingdom, and on top of all of that, not to mention 70,000 people died because of adultery, because of deceitfulness, and because of murder. Sin has terrible consequences. One man said that sin will cost you more than you want to pay. And sin will take you farther than you ever planned on going. James chapter 1 says this. When lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Here's the scary thing, guys. Number one, here's the first point. Is that, number one, you are prone to sin. It happened to King David, uh, whom the Bible says was a man after God's own heart. I mean, God has never said about Doug Barone, that's a man after my own heart. Oh, but David, the one who built the, the one who prepared all of the materials for the temple, King David, uh, the one who God chose to be the king to follow Saul, uh, David that conquered Goliath, uh, David the son of Jesse, uh, David the shepherd, the psalmist, uh, the king of Israel. David committed adultery and deceitfulness and murder. Oh, and you and I are just as prone to wander. Uh, we're just as prone to sin. Uh, um, so because of this, we ought to be careful with prideful thinking. Oh, I never commit adultery. I, I never murder anyone. I, I never uh, be deceitful or sow discord among my brothers or sisters in Christ. I never do that. Well, the Bible says that your heart is deceitful. Above all things and desperately wicked, who can know it? The Bible tells us there. How many of you guys know who Ted Bundy is? How many of you guys have heard that name? Ted Bundy. Uh, Infamous serial killer killed 30 people uh, or more and uh, did terrible things with those people. And uh, in an interview one day, uh, one day before his execution, James Dobson, uh, focused on the family man, uh, Adventures and Odyssey man, 
uh, James Dobson had a sit-down interview with him. And uh, he asked him, hey, describe for me your childhood. And Ted Bundy said, I had a great childhood. I was never abused. I wasn't physically, emotionally, or verbally abused. My parents were good parents. My family was a good family. And James Dobson thought to himself, how does that happen? A good little boy from a good family who had no like emotional problems or distress, how did he turn into a serial killer, Ted Bundy? Uh, how did that happen? Uh, it happened because of a few decisions and addiction to pornography. Uh, but as an American teenager, I can guarantee you that Ted Bundy never could have saw his future sitting in the electric chair because he was con uh, sentenced as guilty of killing 30 plus people. You are prone to sin, uh, whether that be adultery, deceitfulness, or murder of any other kind. You are very prone to that. The most dangerous attitude towards sin is the one that thinks, oh, I'd never do that. That's the most dangerous attitude. That's why we sang the song, prone to wander. Uh, prone to leave the God I love. How many of you guys love God? Uh, I do. I want to love God. Uh, I'm prone to wander. Leave. I love God. I mean, I do. I, I want to do great things for God. But I'm so prone to leave the God I love. Uh, take my heart, O oh God. A take and seal it. Uh, seal it with thy spirit from above. Keep me, God. Rescue me. Thus, rescue thus from sin and danger. The, song, the hymn writer sings that. So number one, we're prone to sin. Number two, here's the second thing. Number two, sin defiles. Sin defiles. It, it dirties. It messes everything up, all right? Notice, if you would, if you have your Bible still open, to Psalms 51, verse number 2. Look at the first two words. Does anybody see that? What are those? Anybody got those? Wash me. Wash me, David says. Look at down, halfway down. He says, you see the words, cleanse me. <laughs> cleanse me. He says, look at verse 7, the first two words. Purge me. God, uh, right in the middle of that, clean. Wash me, verse 7 says. If you look down and... In um, verse number 10, you'll see, Create in me a what kind of heart? A clean heart. Why? Because he had a dirty heart. He had a defiled, a wicked, a filthy heart. That's what sin does. Sin defiles our bodies. The Bible tells us a great Bible passage in 2 Timothy about that. Um, and at the conclusion of all of that verse, here's what it says. I wish I could read all of these verses. But it says this, Flee, flee. I say flee, you say run. So flee, run, run <laughs> away also from youthful lusts. Run away from them, guys. I mean, if you want up a cup of water, you go to the kitchen. Uh, if your kitchen is like our kitchen, there's usually you know, a couple cups on the sink or something like that. And, and uh, I go and I can grab a cup and I go to get some, something to drink. And I, oftentimes I look in that cup, I'm like, oh, ugh. Want that cup? I'll get a, a new cup. Okay. See, I don't want to drink from the dirty cup, right? Uh, most people would guarantee would say, "Yep, I want a clean cup." Don't give me the cup with milk crumbs or whatever in the bottom, uh, milk flakes or whatever kind of things are in the bottom of cups. And so, uh, I would rather choose to drink from a clean cup. Now, if you want God to use you and make your life meaningful, then it is best to be free from filth. It is best to be free from sin which defiles us. And so if you want God to use your life, if you want God to pick you up like a clean cup from the cupboard, it is best to be clean because sin defiles a person. And so number two is sin defiles a person. Number three, and you'll see this in verse 11, is that sin divides. Sin separates, uh, sin uh, divides. It says in verse 11, O David prayed, he says, God, cast me not away from thy presence. <coughs> He's saying, God, don't let me be separated from your presence. Cast me not away from your presence. He's praying and seeking God and trying to be reunited with the God in whom he once loved and whom he still loved. But see, sin separates us. Uh, his fellowship with God had been severed and broken. Why is that? Because David no longer loved God? No. 
because good old David no longer believed God. No, actually it seemed like he very much so believed God and he very much so loved God, but he was separated because sin had got in his life. Sin has got into his heart. And so uh, mark it down that sin divides in your relationships. And I, uh, I'm sure that at surface level, no one would say, well, I want a boyfriend or I want a girlfriend. But I'm sure deep, 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 deep down somewhere within the recesses of, recesses of your heart, you might like to have a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a husband or a wife uh, someday. And uh, now see, in a relationship, sin will separate. Sin will uh, divide even between you and your boyfriend, girlfriend, your spouse, your parents or your grandparents, your teachers, or maybe your pastor or your youth pastor or your friend because the nature of sin it divides sin divides number four here's what the bible tells us is that sin destroys sin destroys if you look in verse number 10 david prays this he says this create he says create god in me a new heart create in me a new heart see sin had destroyed it Sin had uh, destroyed his life, his family, and his morale. And David's prayer and his hope was that God would create a new hope and a new heart within me. Why? Because sin had destroyed everything that David had. Because that's the nature of sin. And so David comes back to God on his knees saying, God, verse 10, create in me a clean heart. I imagine with tears and with sincerity. And so number four is that sin destroys. Here's the last thing, is that sin depresses. Sin depresses a, a person. Not every person that is depressed is in sin, but I'm sure that some of those or some uh, people that are in sin are depressed. Verse 14 and 15. Look, we are with me. The Bible tells us this. Deliver me uh, from blood guiltiness, O God, from... Uh, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall, shall what? <laughs> shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. Verse 15 says, O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall shoot forth my praise. Nothing good was coming out of David's life. Why? Because he was depressed. Uh, because he had nothing to sing about, nothing to rejoice about, nothing to be happy about. Why? Because sin depresses. Sin uh, depresses the individual. And so that's something that I see from this here. And just maybe as a conclusion to remind you that sin is so serious. And sin is a real thing that we need to be vigilant. We need to be watchful for. And we need to make no place for it in our lives. And so as you go home tonight, as you, you know, tomorrow, the next day, make a point. Make a, a strive with all that you can to flee from sin, run away from sin. And so that's what I wanted to share with you tonight. Let's go ahead and pray, and we'll just end it here, all right? Dear Father, I thank you.